38. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world young men and maidens old and young together let them praise the name of the lord whose name only is exalted whose splendor is over earth and heaven the lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants a second reading comes to us from first peter chapter 2 a living stone though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see I'm lying, laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. The Gospel reading for today continues our readings from Luke chapter 2, today beginning at verse 22. It's the story of Simeon and Anna who were in the temple. Some 40 days after Jesus was born, when the Holy Family traveled from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and to the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought the, in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will peace pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to, 
to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, the Holy Family returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. So it's a couple days after Christmas, the third day of Christmas. So let me ask, as you reflect on your life, what in the world are you still waiting for? What is it that you are dreaming of that someday, dot, 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 maybe it's a special vacation or retirement or perhaps buying your first house or having your first child or maybe for those of you who are younger, getting out of school or getting your first job. For six years, I anticipated going on sabbatical and I am sure glad that I went on sabbatical in 2019. I applied, I applied, and I applied, and finally I was accepted, and I can say with confidence, it was surely God's timing that it, I didn't have to wait one more year. I cannot describe the joy, the overwhelming joy I felt in being accepted. Simeon and Anna were two faithful followers of God who were waiting for something special that the Spirit of God had shown them. They waited, and they waited, and they waited, and at the right time, surely in God's time, for Simeon and Anna, they saw with their eyes, they heard with their ears, and they praised God as they saw the infant child, Jesus. Forty days after the birth of Jesus, it was time to bring him to the temple in Jerusalem to make an offering. It's quite obvious that their offering of two doves demonstrated the poverty with which they lived. For those who had means, for those who had access to some wealth, would buy a lamb that would be given. But in this instance, due to their income, they provided two doves. And Simeon said, My eyes have seen your salvation, O God. Promises had been made by God all the way back into the Hebrew Scriptures. Yet God kept God's promises. Promises made, promises kept. He was to be a light of revelation even to the Gentiles for the sake of the whole world. Shade had been kept on the promises of God throughout the Old Testament for the Jews, but even as far back as the promise given to Abraham, the father of the Jews, he was to be a blessing as surely as God had first blessed him. He was to be a blessing to all people. The shade that prevented outsiders of knowing the promises of God was now being illumined and eliminated by Jesus the Christ, who indeed was the light entering the world. Some people rejected the message of Jesus. He was tossed aside like a construction stone which was thought to be unfit, as we heard in the reading from 1 Peter. Yet another outfit picked up that stone, and now he became a cornerstone of a whole new community. Listen closely at this time to the words of Christ alone, Cornerstone, which I have asked Gloria to come and to play and to sing and to share these words at this time.
Christ indeed came to be a builder of a faith community, what we call a church. He became a teacher of spiritual construction. His method was like this after gathering a team, as my former coach Bob Logan taught me. This is how Jesus taught his first followers and as we learn from his word. I do, you watch. I do, you help. You do, I help. You do, I watch. You do, someone new watches. This is how we teach others how to repair, uh, how to change oil on their car, how to change a tire on their vehicle, how to set up a computer and be able to make it work. It's the way that we teach young people how to cook. It's how we learn a new job. I do, you watch. I do, you help. You do, I help. You do, I watch. And now you do in someone new watches. This is how we teach people as well in this faith how to pray. We begin by praying ourselves, and they watch, and then they help with it. They begin to utter the words of the prayer, and then they take the lead, and we help out where they forget until finally we simply watch, and then they begin to teach a new generation, a new friend, a new person, how to pray. It's also how we learn how to read and meditate on scripture or how we learn how to serve others in an appropriate way. It's how we pass on the faith to others. In Ephesians 2, Paul writes these words about Jesus Christ. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that we might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, that through the cross thus putting to death the hostility through it. So Jesus came and proclaimed peace to those who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in the Spirit, both Jews and Gentiles, to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation, built upon the cornerstone of the apostles, the prophets, with Christ himself as the cornerstone. Today we're talking about the very foundation of this faith that Christ came to establish as he set it into place by calling those first followers unto himself. And in that same way, that faith has been passed on to us, but we too are to participate in passing that faith on to others. Here in Ephesians 2, Paul describes the process of moving from being distant from God in Christ to becoming a Christ follower. What does it look like? It begins with you thinking about this question. What is it about your faith in Christ you cannot live without? What is it about your faith in Christ that you cannot live without? We need to wrestle with that question, friends. And then, how has Jesus impacted your life? When we answer this question, we're getting to the heart of our own faith story. You know that we're forgiven, that we've experienced the gracious love of God in Christ, that, that I may know that Jesus is always with me, guiding me, encouraging me, picking me up when I need that in our, my life. But we also need some scriptural support, don't we? Because this enables us to find evidence for our claim. What do we base it on? Is it just our own hunch? Is it something we've heard? Or can we in fact find in the scriptures the words to which we can point and say, this is upon, it's upon these promises that I find this to hold true for myself. You see, what we're talking about is understanding for ourselves God's story, the story of Christ. 
And then coming to know my own story, who I am. Coming to identify the fact that, yes, I am a sinner. I do mess up in my life. I have made and I continue to make mistakes in my life. I have not loved God with my whole being all the time. How about you? Nor have I loved myself all the time. I certainly haven't always loved others all the time. You see, as we do this, and then we begin to listen to others, we put together the three parts of what it means to be a witness for Christ. Knowing the story of Jesus, knowing my own story, and then listening to someone else's story. As we begin to put this together, I believe the Spirit works through us to enable us to point to the one who gives us hope, Jesus Christ our Lord, who in this Christmas time we celebrated that he has come. So Jesus said he invited ordinary people. And I say they're ordinary because just think about Peter and Andrew, James and John who were fishermen. This was their vocation. In all likelihood, they were illiterate. They couldn't read or write. They knew their vocation yet as ordinary people jesus saw the potential in them to be a witness for him because jesus wanted to call ordinary folk and that's what he did and i believe that's what he's done in calling us to calling ordinary folk to be followers for him and jesus believing that by investing in ordinary people god could transform the world one person at a time as god can do in and through our life too so my friends today, as we listen to this story of Simeon and Anna, we hear about the call and the celebration that a light has come as a revelation to the Gentiles and he has become the cornerstone of our faith. As we build our faith on him, as we wrestle with the question around what difference Christ has made in our life, may God enable us to see as his ordinary followers today, that God wants to work through us. God initiated that work, uh, that new work in sending his son into this world. And Christ laid that foundation for the early church. In that same way, he turned that over to them, he turns it over to us. As we lay our life on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ, may God empower you to have eyes to hear, eyes to see and ears to hear this week. To those to whom Christ sends us to be his witness. And may God give us the encouragement to know he's given us that same Holy Spirit that transformed people like Peter from being a coward when Jesus was, be was being uh, questioned to being one who was the foundational piece of the early church. That same Holy Spirit lives in you. Church, we have work to do. As surely as God began that work through Christ our Lord, he wants to work in that way through us. So may God bless you this week as we place our life once again on the cornerstone Jesus Christ. As we begin to pick up our life and then share that cornerstone of faith with others. Amen. We listen to our next carol.
thanks and praise, Lord God, for sending the world into our lives, into our midst. We thank you for those first followers of you who heeded your call to come and follow and who began to build their lives upon Christ, the cornerstone. We thank you in these days that your same Holy Spirit is at work in our midst, that you continue to call us unto yourself, that you empower us not only to believe and to follow and to practice this faith, but that you send us by the power of your Spirit to be your witness. We ask that you would empower us as your church to be bold, in naming the name of the one who gives us hope. For the hopeless of our world, for those who live in the midst of despair, for any who are battling with addiction and with depression or anxiety, or who find themselves in the midst of troubled relationships, you, Christ, come to bring healing and hope. Empower us in a spirit of love to name the name of the one who gives us hope that others may come and see like the wise men of which we just sang, who traveled afar to see the Christ. And as they did so, they knelt down and worshiped. And so too, God, empower our witness through Christ our Lord. We pray tonight or today for Likamba and Los Siquito parishes in Tanzania, for Westside Church of God in Rockford, and for GPS Faith Community in Machesney Park. As we pray for ourselves, empower our witness, empower our service. Thank you for your blessings that continue to be poured forth upon your people. In the name of Christ, we pray. Our Father who art in the kingdom, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, a blessed Merry Christmas to you as kings when we celebrate. I'm going to pass by in the middle here so we can greet you. For those of you gathered online, we thank you for joining us today as we continue to bless and praise God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and fill you with peace in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We listen to our closing song. All right. We're going to do Go Tell It on the Mountain this morning. So when we get to the chorus of the Go Tell It on the Mountain, you flash those lights because we're going to flash the light of Christ. All right.
Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Show.